This is Courtney Ryan. We love Courtney. I think she's so sweet and so lovely. I've never seen a more normal girl in my life. And that is not an insult. It is just a clarification that like, girl, no offense. We ain't living in the same reality. Look at this video. I was shook. Like, little, okay, hold on. Literally, I like Courtney. She's very nice. If like some of Courtney's, like I am, I gotta watch this video with you. Cause I was like, huh? What did she say? Like, I was like, no, 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 no. Oh, actually I left a comment. Oh, damn. She didn't reply. I really wanted to know like a clarification because I was like, no way. Okay, watch this, watch. This video is called The Delusion Dating Standards. Um, continue, the, pay attention. Her brand is like the Fresh and Fit brand telling women and men sometimes, mostly women, that they're delusional for their dating standards, right? And like what they're doing. Now remember, my job is the opposite where I'm like, okay, well, you're not literally delusional. You're just, you want something from a very specific kind of person. So how do we find that person and can we? So mine is like optimistic. Okay, cool. This is your standard. This is your desire. How do I find that for you? Versus them, they're like, um, this is delusional. And I'm like, okay. But like they, I see them as limiting themselves. And I think they see me as like, you can't just do whatever you want. Can't I? Are you going to stop me? Then why can't I? Am I allowed to ask my partner to be ideal? For me, not for the world, fuck the world, for Britney, I think so. And I found it. So what's the problem? What are we really mad about? Are we mad that we maybe settled and you see other people didn't have to? Are we maybe a little bit mad about that? Okay, let's go ahead. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan. And today we are She's reacting so to a TikTok video that many of you sent me and for good reason. Guys, my volume's up on everything. It's up on OBS, it's up on YouTube, it's up on my computer. Is she really low? I'm so sorry. Quit talking, let's watch this video and I will tell you what I think afterwards. Okay, she starts the video by saying, I'm not joking. So we'll believe her when she says that. I'm not joking. I have asked the last three dudes I've dated for their bank account info on the first date. I don't judge people's actions. I look at the intention behind it. So like, why do you ask for that? Because I only want to date a wealthy guy that has money. Valid, so you're getting straight to the point. I think, you know, I have a job. I'm very successful. So I think I have every right to be like, hi, are we on the same level or where am I wasting my time? Now, I also want to say this. The crazy, unrealistic, or delusional content always goes viral because it is just that. It is crazy, it is unrealistic. And okay, so already I'm watching this video and I'm like, what was said that was unrealistic? That a guy she was interviewing, I know him from YouTube. Um, I forget his name, but like a lot of my viewers like him. He's like a vibe. He's He looks really sweet. I'd love to talk to him one day. But like, I don't really know him, know him yet. I haven't really like dived deep into his content. It's very exhausting for me to watch new content. <laughs> the newer divergency. But um, what do you think she's referring to? So before we like jump into it, what is she referring to? What is the delusional thing she said? What, did anyone hear it? Because I was listening and I was like, what was it? Right, like what was the thing? Anybody? Let's go back really fast. Like, hi, are we on the same level or where am I wasting my time? Valid, so you're getting straight to the point. Oh, on the first date. I don't judge people. It's a video by saying, I'm not joking. So we'll believe her when she says that. I'm not joking. I have asked the last three dudes I've dated for their bank account info on the first date. I don't judge people. So is it the bank account info? Well, what does that mean? Oh, like she's asking for the bank account info. Maybe asking on the first date? I just like the voice, but honestly, understand the other gal. At least she's honest and direct. She wants a wealthy guy and goes for it. Good for her. Okay. Crazy is unrealistic and it is delusional. You know, she obviously turned this into a short clip from a long form video for a reason. It's very clearly going to garner some attention and views. I mean, attention equals views equals money. It's as simple as that. So please rest assured knowing that this is not the norm. I really don't think there are a ton of girls out there asking to see your bank account info on date one or. Okay, rest assured this isn't the norm. Why is it rest assured? What are you ashamed of? Are you ashamed that people might look at your bank account? Do you think it's just a privacy matter? Do you think that if you're trans, you should tell them on the first date? Do you think if people are religious, they should tell you on the first date? Do you think if you have kids, you should tell people on the first date? What is the point of a first date? 
Is it to try to get to a second date or is it try to make sure you don't get to a second date? Lots of people have very different standards for what is expected on a first date. For me, when I was very serious about marriage, prior to being serious about marriage, a first date was just there to have fun and see if you liked each other. It didn't matter. But when I was thinking about marriage very seriously, there was no point to a second date if we weren't compatible. There was just no point. And so forever, I just had no second dates. So what do you think it is that makes her think like, oh, thank goodness this isn't the norm? Why? If the norm is you're serious about marriage, then you should be asking about bank accounts on the first day. But is it asking for the account, like to look at it? Or is it just asking like, how much are you worth? Now the girl in question, Sophia Franklin, she is a social media person. She's worth about $500,000. That's her net worth. So she is wealthy and she makes money. And no offense, but if you're both, if you're wealthy, you also have to make sure someone's not using you for your money. Why are we assuming she's the gold digger or that she is like using him for his money when she's worth money? Do you get what I'm saying? Like one of the gestures, because I I make more, I've always made more than my partners basically, but I made more than my partner when I met him and I was a YouTuber. And so one of the gestures of trust we made towards each other is that I paid for my plane tickets and he paid for his plane tickets. And we went back and forth and saw each other from Europe to America during our courting period because we wanted to signal to each other that neither of us are using each other for money and that neither of us think of their money as our money until we're married. Now that we're married, my money is his money, his money's my money. And I'm the breadwinner. So like... Like, I'm fine with that. I'm good with that. I love it. Slay. But it's one of those things where I didn't just choose him. Again, I chose the person I trust the most in the world. So of course he knows everything about my bank account. He had he could log into it if he wanted. He and I go over it at least like once a week. And then once a month we go over finances. Like he literally watches me on my bank accounts all the time. I like, we share money. We're married. And so, um, but we share everything. So you know what I mean? <laughs> but again, what do you think it is that makes people go like, oh, why is she asking about money on the first date? Because genuinely, if you're looking for marriage, you're asking about lifestyle. Like, hey, I'm curious if you're into working because I want to do this lifestyle. And the person goes, no, actually, I'm good making 20K a year. Are you okay, you know, paying for our vacations? Like, look, if my partner and I wanted to go on a trip somewhere, I would never think like I'm paying for his vacation. I would just think like, yeah, we're going on a trip. It's our money. Guys, I need you to understand when I was dating people, it was my money and his money because I didn't trust anyone. Now that I trust this person, it's our money. I would trust him. He's never going to F me over. He's never going to take my money and spend it. He's never going to abuse the trust I've given him because I chose well. But I understand the fear because some people do think they choose well and then that person does screw you over. I get it 100%. But I think it is weird that there's a red flag to already be asking about money on the first date. Because again, are you talking about marriage? Are you talking about dating? If you're just talking about dating, super weird question to ask. If you're talking about marriage, then like super reasonable to ask, right? I feel like people complicate things so much. It's something I struggle with. I mean, I don't know who you're talking to, but agree. Agree. Okay, hold on. I'm looking at your comments. Usually asking what you do for a living will give an indication of eco economic status. Maybe. What if she said, I'm in social media? Like some people have dated me and they're like, so do you make like a million dollars or do you make like $30,000? And I was like, huh. Like people don't know how much influencers make. So if you're an influencer, it might be harder to tell. Or people always assume you're really, really rich, which is frustrating. If you have money, you don't want to support an un, un, unambitious hobo. Mm, yeah, like I don't, I will say one of the, one of the good things about my partner is that um, he was able to like maintain work, had his own place and stuff when I met him. Um, I definitely don't want to support somebody who's a bum, but he like, that's the thing is like we're a team. So if he ever laxed on his role in the team, that would be different. But because he doesn't, he's like A plus on his part of the the negotiation it's why it works like again even when you have stay-at-home moms if the stay-at-home moms don't do their role then the the whole team fails like you you're you might be home all day but you still got to do the things you still got to do the things so again like you never want to support a partner who doesn't want to step up but it's not about them making money. It's about them doing the things, right? And by the way, I don't think it's a weird question to ask. I think like how you answer is also weird, right? I think that's also weird. Like, why are you being so defensive about it? 
You know what I mean? Good for her and good luck to her. Wealthy men will more likely mistreat her. I feel like that is super wrong. I think people in general will mistreat you if you pick wrong. But I don't think that that's true. There are more poor people and middle class people than rich people. And they got a statistic of domestic violence that's very severe. Like wealthy people, I don't know that they abuse more. I don't know if that's true. That feels like a weird assessment. That feels like a bubble thing. I can see it. I know the rich, abusive people for sure. But I don't know that that's true at all. Um, any more than a normal averagey person. I think the illusion we like to give is that averagey people are nicer and kinder, but like they're just as homophobic and domestic violence-y as the rest of them, okay? Maybe even ever, I have legitimately never asked my husband to see his bank account. Ever. So let me know if this has happened to you. Girls, listen to what she just said. Listen to that. Ever asked my husband to see his bank account. Ever. So let me know if She's never asked her husband to see his bank account. Is that, does she mean, and this is the comment I wrote. I said, I'm confused. Are you saying you've never seen your Valentine's bank account or you've never asked to see it and he's just shown you? Like, that's a question I got to know. Is she saying she's never seen her husband's bank account or that she's never asked to see it and he's just shown her? Oh, his bank account. <gasps> Oh, heck, you're right. His bank account. That's still crazy, though. My husband and I have separate bank accounts. Obviously, we're in, it's, it's hard making a joint account right now. We haven't done it yet, but we have separate bank accounts. But of course, we've seen each other's bank accounts. OK, that's crazy if you don't ask to see your husband's bank account. That's what I mean. What kind of a marriage bubble is this? I like Courtney. Maybe she'll talk to me. I'm not here to judge her journey. But I don't know any couple that I think is healthy that hasn't seen each other's bank accounts. Two separate accounts, she trusts him. It's not about trusting. It's about being open and sharing. I think it's a sign of mistrust when you don't openly share. Like, for me, I'm a sharing. Sharing is caring. I'm a YouTuber. I share. Okay? Like, my partner and I, like, he's very actually private, ironically enough. But with me, he wants to share. He did not just spend his whole life trying to find the love of his life not to share. Like, I want to share everything. I want to be on the same page. We're in the team together. Maybe if you have a relationship, like, because even my parents, <clears throat> my parents are conservative. My mom was a stay-at-home mom, but my mom did the finances. My dad made the money, and my mom ran the household because obviously she's the one spending the money for 10 kids. So she needs to be in charge of the money. Not that my dad wasn't in charge of it. They did it together. But my mom is the one who budgeted everything because, again, she's the one shopping for 10 kids. So she's going to know the best sales. She's going to know Sam's Club and Costco and, and Winco. Like, that's so interesting. She's never asked to see her husband's bank account. Oh, good point. I think it's better to have two eyes on everything. It's about open communication and making sure nothing is missed. Yes, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's like, hey, baby, in case I miss something, look this over. That's like, that's exactly what it is. Exactly what it is. When I look at my husband or my partner and I say, hey, babe, like, look this over. Did I miss anything? It's just because if I mess up for me, that's one thing. If I mess up for the both of us and men out here be acting like they don't mess up, maybe that's it. Maybe the men are like, um, I never mess up. And the women are like, I want someone who never messes up. Even my brother and his wife, she's a stay at home mom. She goes over the money. She's the one spending it for kids. So again, like, what is this world that people are, again, no judgment, girl. Like, if it works, it works. You know what I mean? But I just couldn't, I can't think about, like, what, I need to know every dollar I spend. Like, how do you, Dave Ramsey, pay attention to every dollar you spend if you don't know what the other person is spending? That's what I'm saying. Like, how do you budget? Like, how do you plan for the future? How do you... Like how I check my bank account like four times a day. I'm always like every dollar, especially now I'm trying to get better at money. I'm like, okay, every dollar goes where, like, where is my money going? Oh, what is going on? This has happened to you, but for the sake of staying positive here, I am standing by the fact that this is not super common. You can let me know, but I'm going to stand by that. And again, she said she's not joking, so we'll take her word for it. Mm -hmm. 
I'm sorry. Courtney is interviewing or she's reviewing a um a rich person. Of course it's not normal. She's not reviewing an average person. It can't be normal because if normal is average, if we're equating normal to average, which I think is like redundant um, or like not redundant, it's um, it's simplified. It's like, it doesn't make sense. Um, but anyway, is redundant? No, no. Anyway, okay, listen. She is reviewing a celebrity. So of course the dating would be different. Everyone's different. Everyone dates differently. But like, why is she relieved that this is not normal? That's so weird. What is the relief coming from? She said that she has asked this question to the last three dudes that she dated. So then that makes me think, is it not working out then? If you've had to ask three people this, like, is that maybe the reason why it's not working out? I don't know. I guess coming out and asking this right away does kind of save everyone time in the sense that it's clear as day then what you're looking for. But I have to imagine this, and you can let me know what you think down in the comments. The men that she's asking this to, even if they are wealthy or have a hefty bank account, like they have no problem sharing what they make, would they view this as a turnoff? I mean, if there is anything that makes you look like a gold digger, it is asking for someone's bank account information on date number one. Now I understand this. Obviously the stereotype of certain kinds of girls and certain kinds of bubbles is, is gold digger. But if you're in a religious bubble, it's just good practice. If you're in a very specific cultural background, it's just good practice. So she is speaking for very specific kinds of girls. Listen, I don't deal with gold diggers. None of my friends are gold diggers. I don't like them. Some of my guy friends have a tendency to fall for gold diggers. I'm not into gold diggers, okay? It is what it is. But I will say like, um, I, again, if you're thinking of marriage, seriously, then, okay, I went on this first date with this guy. I told you guys this story a billion times. First date with this guy and we talked about money right away. I said, how much do you make? I make about 80K. At the time I was making about 80K. And he goes, oh, that's not as much as I thought it would be, you know, because you're a YouTuber. I was like, okay, but it's like pretty good. Thanks. And he was like, well, I don't make money right now. I quit my job. My money's in stocks. And I was like, okay. And he lives with his mom in LA. And he's like, just so you know, I have to be the breadwinner in the relationship. Like I'm going to have to work because I need to feel like a man. And I was like, you feel like a man right now living with your mom and not having a job? What? First date, talk about money. It never went to a second date. He was really nice. If he ever watches this, you were nice. You were great. But like, no, thank you. Right? It's like <clears throat> the point of a first date is not to get to a second one if you're thinking about marriage unnecessarily. Right? Why get to the second date? Why do it if it's not compatible? And right away, talking about money on the first date helped solidify my answer of saying no, because I didn't like the way he talked about money. So again, I didn't like, you can say it's too far to say like, how much do you make? What's your money like? But what game are we playing, girl? What game are we playing? You know what I mean? <clears throat> Let me scroll up and see your comments. Bro, that's weird to me. Like we should end up uh, to date. How we Wait, we should end up to date on our finances. I don't way I can't read this comment I don't oh my god it's my brain I don't need to look at it daily or anything but like for planning our lives yeah I'm gonna need to know exactly exactly I'm gonna need are we planning we need to plan together it's like girl when we plan a beach trip there's more planning that goes into it than it sounds like your marriage and finances no judgment and I'm just like what is this what is this I knew a physical therapist who didn't even know how much his partner made and vice versa, but that was normal for them. It was about privacy. Okay. I know these couples too. Why do you need privacy from your life partner? Can anyone explain to me why you would need privacy from your live life partner? If it's short term, if you're just dating, if you're serious but not committed, I absolutely understand, right? Like, yes. But if you're in a lifelong commitment, like I'm going to do life with this person, why would you need privacy from your life partner? Like what is that bubble? What am I missing from the context? You know what I mean? My ex was very withholding with that information even when I asked because a lot of mistrust and a feeling of lack of stability on my end. Mm -hmm. Trauma. That's what I'm saying. Like is this a trauma? Is this a cope? Like, and it's totally fine. Like, I've been there. I remember, I, guys, I've dated people that I was like, I don't trust you with money, bro. 
I'm not showing you. Like I was like, mm -mm, my money's my money, your money's your money. And that's what I'm saying. There was a reason. There was a dishonesty, a mistrust. That's why we weren't compatible. I didn't trust them. If you trust your partner enough to let them into your mind, body, and soul, in to spend your life with them, or your life with them, whatever, why do you need privacy from your partner? What is What am I missing here that that makes sense? Honestly, there is no way she is in a marriage and you guys don't know what is in each other's bank accounts. But honestly, I feel like her and dad Vicid are falling into the spiral of delusion girl posts. Dad Vicid, I don't know who that is, but maybe I do. Um, but yeah, like maybe, God, is there a way she's in her marriage and she doesn't know how much her guy has? How are y'all going to be a team if you don't know what you're working with? Lit Thank you. How are y'all going to be a team and you don't even know what you're working with? Oh. That's so weird. Like, what is it? <clears throat> what am I missing? <clears throat> My throat is so dry today. Ugh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to read this comment and I missed it. I do think it's odd to ask what's your bank account, even if you're dating for marriage, because your financial status can change. Maybe ask ambitious oriented questions to see potential wealth, uh, potential for wealth. Mm. I don't like potentiality. I want to know where you're at now. I want to be fine with where you're at now because I'm old. Remember, guys, remember, I, I'm, I got married in my 30s. So I'm I only dated seriously starting in my 30s. So there is no potentiality for growth. There is no conversation about like. You know, it's like, am I good with where you are now? And then we can talk about growth. Because if I'm not even okay with where you are now, we're not getting married. We have to be okay with where you are now. I can't live for this ambition. Like, look, if my partner one day wants to do something like really ambitious with his life, that's great. But I'm not sitting here like one day he'll be this. I'm not living for anyone's potential anymore. I'm either liking you for the person you are right now or whatever. Now me... Obviously, there's a potential for wealth growth because I have a job I've been stable in for a few years. I'm dedicating my time to it. This is what I want to do. I'm putting in the effort. So I'm actually, you can look at my potentiality because I've grown every year. I've been a YouTuber, right? For the last few years, I've taken it very seriously. And even this year, I'm taking it more seriously for real, for real. Then that makes sense. You can say like, oh, is your goal to stay where you're at? Now, my partner and I decided um, that our goal is to stay within a like a modest income and then Everything else is kind of like for savings. So that way him and I aren't trying to be wealthier. Our goal is not to say like, oh, when we get to a million dollars, we'll stop. It's like, no, we're going to live off this amount of money and that's our lifestyle. So as long as we're making that, I'm doing great. He's doing great. But if we make extra, it will go into proper investment avenues, right? But we're not trying to aim to live off of very much because we're, we're pretty like low maintenance people. The most I spend money on is like food and dresses and his is like video games and food. So like we can manage that on a pretty decent salary. We don't need to make a ton of money. But if we did make a ton of money, cool. Now we can invest that in something different, but it isn't in the lifestyle. It isn't in, oh, now I'm going to go to Bugai. Like that's not who we are. We are not Bugai people. You know what I mean? That's not who we are. <laughs> that's a fair point I forget you're grown Brittany you look like you're a 22 year old please thank you god bless god bless I'm not even wearing foundation today girls thank you my makeup's like my makeup brushes are all in transit right now um that's so sweet but yeah I um I forget too that people are young I forget that people are young because of course in my 20s I wasn't talking about finances on the first date like why would I do that but I also wasn't serious about marriage that's just the real that's the real I'm being real I wasn't serious. Now, my farm brother, who was very serious in his 20s about marriage and same with his wife, they did talk about money on the first date. Ben Shapiro, who married his wife, again, very serious about marriage, talked about money on the first date. So again, I don't know if it's just like serious versus unserious or if it's the way you go about it. Did anyone answer my question about why you need privacy from your partner? I didn't see the comments, but maybe I missed it. I'm sorry, unless you're building a nest egg, I'm not dating you if you live with your parents. Yeah, there's something about that too. I really, I love that my partner didn't live with his parents. Um, though he wasn't building a nest egg. He had nice savings and I had a nice savings at the time. But like, like, 
living with your parents is fine and depending on the economy but at the same time like I did not want to date a guy who lived with his parents or a woman who lived with her parents because again like I want to come see you at your place so we can you know what I'm saying like I want to come see you I want you to come see me I don't want to like go to your mom and dad's house bro it's just not like you know you know um okay Like, men say a lot of things about, oh, women are gold diggers. Oh, the, you know, if she wants a provider, that means she's a gold digger. If she likes nice things, she's a gold digger. No, not necessarily, but this one... I will say this, though, just to play devil's advocate a little bit. I think it's fine that women want to date someone who is financially stable, who is financially independent, who is good with their money. Like, I think those are positive characteristics. I'm not telling women to go date broke people. But this question... Asking someone for their bank account information on date one just makes it seem like money is all that you care about, which in my opinion is when it becomes an issue. If you, you know, want someone who's financially stable, financially independent, but you also care about a ton of other things and, you know, you're caring about values, morals, life goals, contributions to the world, you know, the bigger things that contribute to the long- Girl, money is such a big thing though. That's what I'm saying. It is a part of values to know someone's financial situation and to have somebody who's honest about it. Look, I understand money is private. 1000%. I've seen those couples that are very successful and money is private. They probably wouldn't answer that question on a first date. 100%. 100%. Those are also the couples I know who dated for eight years before getting married, which is great. They've been together for like the couple I'm thinking of has been together over 40 years. It's a great couple, but they're very different. Like they're very private like very private. And I'm not, a, I'm not that private. I'm a sharer. A sharing is caring. So again, is it just like some people are built this way? I couldn't even imagine. I couldn't even imagine being that private with the person I'm supposed to spend my life with. Because again, like, I don't know, wanting nice things does not make you a gold digger. I agree. Wanting nice things doesn't make you a gold digger. And also like, again, what is a gold digger? Like, I know what everyone thinks it is. I know what we all think it is. And it is a thing. It's definitely a category of person. <sighs> but she's the wealthy person as well. So what if he's the gold digger? What if she's worried he's the gold digger? Because she's like, I just want someone who makes the same amount of money as me. So I know, like, he's not just marrying me for my money. Like, what if it's that? Remember how, like, Britney Spears' ex-husband, and soon-to-be ex-husband, was like, I'm not a gold digger. Look, I make my own money. Look, I got her her ring, which he was gifted a ring. Like, do you get what I'm saying? You know, women can be afraid of male gold diggers too, girl. Longevity of a relationship, I get that. But if all you care about is what their bank account looks like, not so great. The amount of money in someone's account does not equate to compatibility or long-term potential or relationship satisfaction even. Mm. You know, if that's your biggest concern or requirement upon dating, mm. talking to someone new, entering a relationship, I think there is a much deeper rooted issue here. Mm -mm, girl, wrong. What statistic are you viewing? Statistics show intimacy, finances, and kids are the three top reasons for divorce. I think it shifted over the last like 10 years maybe, but those were like, those were always the trifecta of divorce. Money is, do you watch financial shows? Money is absolutely the reason like for divorce. Now, I get what she's saying to give her the benefit of the doubt that you don't want to focus on money, but money has to play a role. Like I said, I don't care. I don't mind that my husband doesn't work. It makes it, it's good for the team, right? Because he does everything else. And all I have to do is work, which is great. I love that. Like you don't understand like how amazing that is for my, my life. Like it's just the greatest thing ever. But I know that I can rely on him because he was financially well, like, well, he did well with his finances prior to me getting with him. He had his own place. He, you know, didn't have debt or anything like that. And he had, um, like, a good savings. He had stability. He had consistency. He had the ability to actually, like, on a, like, make, like, make his life work for him. And he wasn't, like, um, he didn't need saving. Does that make sense? Like I didn't come in to save him. I came in to add to his life and vice versa. He didn't need me to buy his plane ticket to come see me. 
And I've dated a lot of people that like wanted to be the stay-at-home partner so they didn't make an effort. And I don't think that's attractive. I think people who want to be the stay-at-home partner are not attractive if they just want to do it so they can avoid responsibility. I think it's attractive to say, I'm going to be the stay-at-home partner who's going to make our life better. That's attractive. So yes, it's unattractive when a woman's like, how much money do you make so I can stay home and be a bum? But this is a working woman with a career and a net worth that's higher than the average. She's not asking how much money do you make so I can stay home and be a bum. Unless she is, and I'm totally reading the situation wrong. But like, isn't she saying, isn't she the category of woman who's like, I just want to make sure you're not a bum. Do you get what I'm saying? And she also said, you know, she's successful. She has a good career and wants to make sure she's with someone who is on her level, which mm -hmm. I think is how a lot of women feel mm -hmm. these days, which is why, you know, the bar has kind of been raised for men. As women have become more successful, they're then demanding more from men. Even mm -hmm. though they are more successful than ever before, they still want a man who is at their level or above for the most part. You know, there are... Mm. Because men aren't... Men for the first time in their lives are realizing they can be stay-at-home partners and they don't know how to be. If the average man doesn't even know how to do his own laundry or cook his own food or run a household or know what detergent to use or know what bleach to use on your floors or know what then like he isn't, then he has to be making the same or more. You can't date a man to be the stay-at-home partner if he doesn't know how to do those things. See, my partner, she's wonderful. <laughs> they are just a peach. She just really knows her way around the place. Their concern is not being a man. Their concern is being a great partner. And their concern is doing things correctly. They have a desire to do things like actually well. They read instructions. They like sit there and we like problem solve. You know what I mean? So my partner isn't somebody who I would be marrying for like I don't need him to have a career because he knows how to run a household. But if I needed to be the career person and run the household, it's like bro. So these men only because they can't, they don't know how to run a household, they need to be showing that they're not bums. If men could run households, I don't think women would need them to get jobs. If they could really run a household, then it made sense. Now, in most couples, you would want, a two, you would want um, two incomes, no kids, right? If there's no kids. I always thought I would never have a stay-at-home partner, um, but I am sick. Since the diagnosis and since my stress for everything is like up, like my partner and I, it makes so much more sense for me just to be the full-time worker right now. That could change. We're open to it. But in terms of efficiency for our team, it makes more sense for me to work full time just because I need a lot of help, um, <laughs> which is very hard for me to process, by the way, because I was such a like a 100 hours a week, like hardcore worker. And now I'm like, OK, everyone slow down. OK, yeah, dink, double income, no kids. If there's kids at home, obviously you would have a stay at home partner. But <laughs> I wish I could trust my husband to run the household. Honestly, he's better at it than I am. I'm not even messing with you. My person like. He is better at laundry. He's better at dishes. He's better at everything because he's like very into, maybe it's his like neurodivergency, but he's very into the details of like getting things correct. And so he just does it better than I do. I'm a rusher. I'm like, get it done, get it done, get it done. Like I'm, I move like an army because I grew up in a house of 10 kids where you just like get it done, get it done, get it done. You know, you're doing five loads of laundry, you know, whatever a week or 10 or 12, you know, some days, some weeks. So again, like, I am really lucky that I have a partner who's very good at his job, which is running the household. If I had a partner who wasn't, I'd be like, you better be getting a job. But you see how the job is like because they're not good at being partners, which is a job. It's interesting. It's interesting. It's interesting. I'm a much better worker than I am a housewife, but I'm a pretty good housewife. He's a much better one. Our statistics about this I can pop up on the screen for you I don't know them off the top of my head right now in marriages men still tend to out earn women by the majority here there is a small percentage of women who out earn their husbands but it's significantly lower than the amount of men who out earn their wives so you know I do understand to an extent wanting to be with someone who is at your level or above women typically date up in some way shape or form as men and women value different things when they're looking for a partner um, but money being the only driving factor is really setting you up for complete disaster and a strictly transactional relationship. You know, I'm trying to think of an equivalent that men would ask women on a first date. And what instantly comes to my head is men asking women, what is your body count? Or how much do you weigh? 
So on our first date, we did ask what our body counts were, what STIs might, there might be, what medical issues there might be, what neurodivergency there might be. What We asked that on the first date. Next. Next. That's what I'm saying, girl. Are we on first dates to find the love of our life? Are we on first dates just to chill? Because if we're just chilling, yeah, it's like, that seems like a weird first date question. But if you're courting, if you're serious about marriage, it's like, hey, do we have the same lifestyle? How do I feel about this? Because look, for me, body count doesn't matter. I don't care how many people you've been with. I'm more concerned with like STIs and health issues. And let's talk about how we're going to like work on that, right? I'm more concerned with like the other stuff. But <clears throat> for some people, body count matters. For body count, for some people, body count does matter. You know, why does body count matter? I don't know. Some people uh, think it lowers like your quality as a person. Which women get so beyond upset about, but then find it okay to ask any type of question they please. You know, I'll say this, if we're getting to this point, we can't be cherry picking what we're okay with and what we're not, what works in our favor and what doesn't. If you're going to ask men these types of questions, don't be surprised when they ask you something in return. It's toxic all around. And I hate to see it, to be honest with you. And I also wanted to note a comment that her guest made. He said, I don't judge people's actions. I look at the intention behind it, which gives her a little bit of grace here. You know, they're recording a video. I'm sure he's like trying to be like, Okay, but like explain that please because it doesn't sound that good. But I just don't know if it's entirely true. I think your actions speak volumes of your character. They provide observable evidence of- mm. Okay, giving Courtney the benefit of the doubt. So I would agree. I would be like, if you don't ask your husband for his account number, you're telling me you don't trust him and like you're heading for a divorce. So in my brain, which is a bubbles thing, right? In my cultural background, I don't know what to call it. I would say when I hear Courtney say, like, I would, I'm, I don't ask my husband for his account information, I'm hearing, like, I don't trust my husband. I don't have transparency with my husband. I'm hearing he doesn't trust me. I'm hearing I'm trapped in my marriage and I'm not allowed to ask questions. Otherwise, I'll come off like a gold digger. I'm hearing a lot of insecurity and cope, but I could be wrong. In the same way, when Courtney's hearing this girl, she should assume she could be wrong. Maybe she's right. Maybe this girl's a gold digger, which again would be really weird, but like, maybe she is. But again, it's interesting. It's interesting that, you know what I mean? Like Courtney doesn't even, to me, Courtney gives me like why you do, I, I will, I'll try to reach, I'll send her this video. Maybe I'll clip this, send it to her and say, hey girl, like I would love to explore these ideas with you. Do you want to do a collab? And see if she'll talk to me. But like, that's what's so funny is like, I hear her and I'm like, mm. What's that? What do you mean by that? What's that mean? Mm -mm. Of someone's behavior and can have tangible consequences. Intentions, on the other hand, reflect more of a person's underlying motivations and thoughts behind the actions. And I think it's important to understand that both actions and intentions can be significant in understanding someone's character fully and evaluating their behavior. Just something to think about. What scares me a little bit though is people taking this type of content and applying it to their own dating lives. I have watched the transformation of this happen firsthand with things like the sprinkle sprinkle or princess treatment. It's not a joke anymore and women actually believe if a man does not pay all of your bills all of the time, then he's dusty and doesn't like you that much. And that is just one of the many unrealistic examples that I've seen. Now, is this the majority? I don't think so. Again, I think we can point back to the crazy, delusional, unrealistic stuff going viral here, but it's still happening more often than it probably should. And what people fail to realize who think this way is that we all have different financial situations and circumstances. And just because you saw something online doesn't mean that it automatically applies to you. The exception is not the rule. You know, back when I did my girl interviews, some of the girls said, outlandish things. They wanted a man who made $500,000 or a million dollars and had a Pagani BC and all of this crazy stuff. And when shorts of that got posted over on TikTok, some of the comments were, is her audio getting lower or am I getting louder because I'm chewing chips? This is so weird. Hello? Like she's so low. Or worrisome to me because girls were saying, I don't give an F. I want my man to be pulling 500K. I don't care if that's not the average, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but that, okay. So if a girl 
who's not making 500k wants a guy who pulls 500k that's kind of crazy but the girl you reviewed originally did she is worth money so technically i feel like it's a weird assumption that they're the same category of girl but i think women think this because men are also out here saying like be rich be the one percent get a bugatti men are also out here bragging about their incomes or their alleged incomes which is why again you want to talk about money on the first second third fourth fifth date depending on your goals because a lot of people do lie about their income. A lot of men out here pretend they're rich when they're not. A lot of men out here pretend they have money when they don't. So again, okay, like, what are we talking about here? Lots of men do this. Lots of men feel pressured to do this. You want to talk about the pressure of being a man? A girl feels like she should lie about her body count and a man feels like he should lie about how much he makes. And that's what I'm saying. I love dating neurodivergent. I love dating like alternative. I love dating in my little progressive bubble because it's not about any of those things. It is about what kind of a person are you? Are you a good person? Are you good enough that you won't lie to me? Are you a kind enough person that you'll like value my consent? Are you a kind enough person that you will value my consent? You know what I mean? And I think people fail to realize that that is delusional. It is delusional. I believe the average salary last time I looked was $56,000. You know, just because you saw some person online whose husband makes $500,000 does not mean that that automatically applies to you. The exception is not the rule. There is an average for a reason. So some of the content or just behavior I see is delusional and it's, it's getting out of control. So I guess what I'm saying is that what worries me a little bit about this type of content, even if it is supposed to be a joke, people will take it seriously and start doing this themselves, which hate to be the one to burst a bubble here, I don't think will turn out or land the way these girls expect it to. When you have such a powerful platform with so many young women or young men following you, you know, I have a lot of men who follow me, she has a lot of women we know, who follow girl. her. I am in we no all. way trying to say that you're responsible for what the people who follow you do. When I see someone with such a powerful platform, it's a shame to see them promoting, you know, toxic or manipulative behavior, which is ultimately leading to the degeneration of the current dating market that we're in and the minds of- mm -mm -mm. Mm, Do you think the- do you think the dating market sucks because everyone's taught to lie to each other? Do you think it's kind of ironic that this girl is like trying to get honesty out of her partners and she's being demonized? Now this girl's perfect. I don't think about her. But like, okay, like again, right? Like, okay, so like again, this girl is saying, I want to know who you are on the first date. Yes, your money. And they're like, you can't do that. And you don't think that people just want, they just want to know what they're dealing with. And if you're a broke, say it, be proud. Be like, yeah, dude, I'm doing my best, but I'm a teacher and I'm poor. So like, it is what it is. So many teachers are great people, but they're not making money. And I think you should be proud that you chose a job that you like and a job that's good and fulfilling, but you're not rich. Most teachers who live in California can't even live in the districts that they work in because it's too expensive. So again, we're asking about bank accounts on the first date, depending on what your goal is with marriage, but we're really just asking for honesty. That's really what the conversation is about, is honesty. Hey, how much do you make? I just want to know. Um, it's okay if you want to keep it private. I'm all about it. But just so you know, like, I think we should be transparent at some point, exchange finances when we're, you know, uh, feeling good and safe. Because it's okay to say, hey, if it's okay for the first date, here, this is how I would handle it. The girl's like, how much you make? I make 500K. I make 200K. I make 100. How much you make? And he's like, oh, man, I'd love to answer that question for you if it's okay with you because of privacy reasons. Can we get to like a more serious part in the relationship uh, before we talk about money? But just so you know, I do make um, at least 500. Mm, I do make at least 4,000 a month. And then maybe prove that somehow. You know what I mean? I can understand a desire for for privacy. Because like not everyone wants their business out there, right? I understand that. But at the same time, again, when you're talking about dating, you are talking about sharing everything. And I think when you, again, it's like, it is bubbles. Oh, it's so bubbles, right? It's just like everyone's dating so differently. It's not wrong to feel nervous that someone who wants to know how much you make. It's not wrong to feel um, nervous that someone won't tell you how much they make. Both things are within reason depending on the scenario. You know what I mean? So again, 
because we live in a world that is lying to each other, so much lying, can you really be shocked? Do you know how many people I know who have literally been like, I know of a girl, I know a girl who's diagnosed with like an STI, but is like convinced sometimes that she doesn't have it. And then she's like, no, 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 I do have it. But then when she first got diagnosed, she didn't believe it. So she like slept around and I was like, what are you doing? And I don't know her enough to like reach out to her, but like somebody was asking me advice on her behalf. And I was like, tell her right now to stop it. And then I hear about guys doing this all the time. People don't want to believe the reality of their situation. So they create a lie within themselves, which creates that cognitive dissonance. And then they project that onto other people. I'm not poor. I'm not broke. Well, they're $50,000 in debt from what? Buying hot Cheetos? That's a swing at myself. Do you guys know that I was in debt? Um, I'm still in a little bit of debt right now, but I was in major debt during the COVID, during co quarantine. I had like like 30, like 35, 38 thousand dollars of credit card debt. And all of it was like really on nothing, like nothing significant. And then I had like 10K of medical debt, 15K medical debt. But like I paid it all down. <laughs> um, because I told you guys, like I just did nothing but work, right? And I just paid it all down and I became debt free. And that felt pretty good. And then I had like 10K in savings. That felt pretty good. Then I got into debt again a little bit, which sucks. But I'll get back out of it again. It's a cycle. But I need to be transparent about those things with my partners. I need to say like, yeah, here's what I have. Because I'm coming into this marriage with baggage, right? You're going into marriage with something to share with your partner, whether you like it or not. Because of the Cheetos, honestly, a lot of it was hot Cheetos. A lot of it was just like, I was, you know, depressed through my 20s and my teens and my elementary years and I wanted to unalive myself and I figured I would by 35 and so I figured like who cares about saving, who cares about buying a house, who cares about money, who cares about any of those things when you're going to die. And now I'm like, oh, I'm probably not going to die because I decided not to and then I'm probably going to live a long life unless I have cancer and then you know, it got down to like, oh, I have to be really serious about my finances. And then I dated enough people who were really bad with money or like weren't into making money. And I realized like, I don't want to live this poor. You know what I mean? I, I think a lot of like, I said this on one of my podcasts, but I think a lot of like cottage core and a lot of um, like fantasies of owning property and living out in the wild. I love that fantasy. I'm a big fan of it. But girl, it doesn't pay the bills. It doesn't pay the bills. Like it really is a version of sometimes running away from the responsibilities of actually trying to make it in the world. I mean, just averagely speaking, like if you're contending as an average person in a city, you're playing a different game than somebody who's in the middle of nowhere. But if you're in the middle of nowhere, you're not making the kind of money you would make in the city. So you're still in the same game. You're just in the country. Like unless you have money and resources on that plot of land of yours, what do you think is going to pay tax? You have to pay property tax. What do you think is going to pay your bills for the rest of your life? Like you can't, there's no, nowhere in the world you can really live, though there are a couple technical places where like you don't owe somebody money for something. So again, you got to make money. These young people that follow us. Again, there are many different things that play into that, but I don't think content like this really helps at all. So I'll end it with this. While yes, there are women out there who think this way and genuinely believe these crazy things we see online, as we witnessed in my own interviews here that I wish were scripted, but sadly were not. They were very real, unfortunately. I know for a fact this is not the average or the norm. And you know, I just think there are some things that we should keep to ourselves. And I think this was one of them. It just was not a good look. My goal here on this channel is to promote happy, healthy, fulfilling relationships that are- <gasps> We're doing the same thing, Courtney. Healthy, happy, kind. And you're doing healthy, happy, fulfilling. We're doing the same thing. So why are we so different about it? Bubbles. Bubbles. Everyone spam the bubble emoji in chat right now. It's bubbles. That's what I'm saying. Bubbles. Isn't that interesting? Why is she acting like she's a horrible person? That's wild. Bubbles. She has no idea. I think I would shock Courtney. I think I would shock Courtney to her core. I think my parents would shock Courtney. Like, that's what's crazy. I think my brother would shock her. My whole cultural background would shock her. Oh, look at those bubble emojis. Let's go. Cute, cute, cute. Thanks, yeah, yeah. I appreciate the effort. <laughs> but yeah, so it, isn't it interesting how she's talking about her? Are not toxic and do not involve asking someone on the first date 
how much they have in their bank account. That does not fall into my happy, healthy, fulfilling category. But you guys Fair. can let me know what you think down in the comments. Fair. If you like this video or found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumb. Fair. So fair. But not asking your husband what's in his bank account doesn't fall into mine. I could never even imagine. I can't wait to end the stream and go tell my partner, like, bro, Courtney Ryan hasn't even, what does that mean? Like, he'd be like, I don't get it. And I'm like, I don't get it. But that's great. I love that she found someone to marry. Same. But like my partner and I are so different. We're like always sharing. We're always excited because we plan together. Literally like like even when we buy snacks, I'm like, okay, why are we buying the snack? Are we buying it because we want it? Are we buying it because it sounds good because we're hungry? Like we double check with each other because like both of him are foodies. Like we'll eat everything unnecessarily. So again, like we talk about everything. Every dollar we spend because we're again, we're trying to go for major like couple goals here. It's a lot. In my head and real life while in bed My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun.